Hi, my name is Bobby, and today we are going to talk about mammals of Minnesota. We are going to discuss the characteristics of a mammal. We will highlight 10 different species, and we'll also answer some questions from viewers about Ask the Naturalist. We will also share some activities and resources for you to continue further learning. Even though there are about 80 species of mammals found in Minnesota, we are going to highlight 10 of them today. So let's go ahead and get started and jump into lesson number three, mammals of Minnesota. What are the characteristics of mammals? There are four of them. They have either fur or hair at some point in their life. They are warm blooded, They drink milk, and they have live birth. The first mammal we are going to highlight is Minnesota's biggest, the moose, a species found in northern Minnesota that weighs an average of 950 to 1,000 pounds. Their antlers can weigh up to 40. You can see that the teeth are very similar in shape. It is because they are herbivores and they eat plants in the water and also shrubs. They are known to dive to the bottom of shallow water to eat vegetation. Did you know that a moose can swim even up to 10 miles without stopping? Moose poop is just one sign that an animal has been in the area. Our next species is the white-tailed deer. Baby deer, known as fawns, are born with spots to help camouflage in the spring, and those spots will disappear between three to four months. Male deer lose their antlers, and many people look for them in the woods, which is called shed hunting. The underside of their tail is white, and they will raise them when alarmed to show the coloration. You can see the size difference between the moose and deer poop. Sometimes it is called chocolate-covered raisins, but don't be fooled. Our next species is the black bear. This animal is an omnivore, which means it eats both plants and meat. Some things that the black bear likes to eat are insects, vegetation, berries, and acorns and hazelnuts. The sense of smell from a bear is stronger than that of a dog. Bears can often hibernate for up to seven months. Our next species is the beaver. They are the largest rodent in Minnesota. They are an animal well known for adaptations, which is either something physical or a behavior that helps them survive. A beaver can stay underwater for as long as 20 minutes. To help it underwater, it has valves for the nose and ears that shut, and a nictitating membrane, which is like people using goggles when swimming. Their eyes are on the top of their skull so they can see while in the water. Their lips can close behind their front teeth to help carry a branch while swimming. They can even chew through a six inch tree in 15 minutes. Our next species is the woodchuck. People are familiar with the riddle, how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Oddly enough, woodchucks do not eat or use wood. This animal also goes by groundhog, whistle pig, and land beaver. They like to burrow underground. These animals also hibernate. As we are in spring, we are looking for signs around camp as they are coming out of hibernation. A common spot to find them at camp is around the rocks in the ball field. Our next species is the river otter. They are part of the weasel family and have a long, slender body. They have webbing between their feet for swimming, oily fur to repel water, and are active in winter. They can spend eight minutes underwater and are very playful animals. The otter is a mammal favorite 
among kids visiting Laurentian. Our next species is the gray wolf, also known as the timber wolf. It is a carnivore and has a variety of different teeth, which are used in different ways, such as cutting, shredding, and chewing. They can wrap their thick, furry tails in front of their face to keep them warm. Wolves not only communicate through howling, but also their body language, such as how they position their ears and tail. We have a sports team named after them in Minnesota, the Minnesota Timberwolves, the men's basketball team. Our next species is the Canada lynx. It is one of three wildcat species in Minnesota, with the others being the bobcat and cougar. They have snowshoe-like paws to stay on top of the snow. Lynx favor snowshoe hair for food. They have long ear tufts and live in northern Minnesota. We have a sports team named after this species, the Minnesota Lynx, a women's basketball team. Our next species is a striped skunk. You may remember last week's episode when Jim talked about phenology and showed this picture of a skunk. There have been more sightings of them at camp. A skunk is about the size of a house cat. People have often smelled the scent of a skunk, especially while driving. They are known to spray their scent up to 15 feet. Owls are predators of skunks because they do not have a sense of smell. Did you know that Minnesota also has the eastern spotted skunk? Our next species is the little brown bat. It is one of seven species found in Minnesota and is the most common. Translated from German to English, bat means flying mouse. They are the only mammal that truly flies. Flying squirrels only glide. This animal can eat half its weight and insects each night. Bats are not blind, but at night they have a hard time seeing and use echolocation to find prey. Understanding this from bats, we have been able to create sonar and radar. Check out our future episode on biomimicry to understand how we look at the natural world for ideas and technology, materials, and how systems work. Jane asks, I know in your last YouTube video you are still in winter, but what mammals will you be seeing at LEC emerging? That's a good question. Most of our snow is gone now and it is actually starting to look like spring. A few mammals hibernate in winter and there are some that are mostly inactive. We are watching for signs of emerging animals such as the woodchuck, black bear, chipmunk, little brown bat, striped skunk, and the 13 line ground squirrel. Sherry asked, what kind of habitat do possums prefer? In Minnesota, we have the Virginia possum, which is found in woodlands and agricultural areas, but are not often found in the far north. Temperatures are cold, especially with hairless ears, nose, and tail. However, their range continues to expand further north because of a warming climate. They can often be found in hollow logs, ground dens, piles of brush, and even under buildings. Thank you for joining us in this week's episode of Lessons from Laurentian and reaching out with your Ask the Naturalist questions. Next week, Sam will teach about food waste and composting. Subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes and check out the resources listed below for activities and additional information. Take care. Until next time.